All right, looks like it's about six o'clock. So in the interest of uh, everyone's time, well, why don't we get started? Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. And we're gonna talk about the Tennessee and Oneida Stormwater Project, the uh, second phase of this project. Uh, so thank you all for hopping on tonight. Uh, Bailey, uh, do you wanna start the, the presentation here? few things that we'll go through tonight. We'll give you a, a, a quick project overview and talk about some of the benefits of the project, kind of recap that phase one uh, project that ended last year, uh, really get into this second phase, some of the construction plans and, and some of the traffic impacts that'll go with it, give you a good project timeline, uh, and then have time for uh, questions and answers and, and talk a little bit about how you can stay informed. So just a, a couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, we're doing that so we can post it to the project website for those uh, who couldn't join us tonight. Uh, the attendees, you are muted during this webinar, uh, but you'll see a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, click on that at any time and you can pop in comments or ask questions and uh, we'll address those uh, at the end of the presentation. So without that, with that, uh, let's, Kind of introduce the project team, Brian. Hi, my name is Brian Hoover. I will be the project manager for Dottie. Um, and I was also the project manager on phase one, so I can answer some questions about that if they come up. Hello, everyone. My name is Vu Trung. I'll be the project inspector on this uh, phase two project, and I was also on phase one as well. So I'm with the city and county of Denver. Hello, everyone. I'm Travis Davis with Ames Construction. I will be the construction lead on the site. I'm Joy Wassendorf with CIG Public Relations, and we're assisting the, the city and the contractor on keeping you all informed. And hi, my name is Bailey Arison. I'll be the on-site outreach consultant for Ames Construction, helping you guys stay informed with what's going on on-site. Okay, so I just wanna go through basically why we're doing this whole project. It's a three-phase project. Um, there is an area just south of Leedsdale on Oneida, there's a, shopping center there that would experience some flooding in, in major rain events. And so ultimately we are trying to get all of that water conveyed down Mississippi and spill into Lollipop Lake, which is in Garland Park there. And then um, from there it spills into the actual Cherry Creek. So phase one, we build these things from downstream to up. So we started at the Cherry Creek outfall and um, phase one consisted of, of building uh, an outfall into Cherry Creek. We also um, increased the capacity of Lollipop Lake. We increased the footprint of the lake and um, did some other park features, a pollinator garden. We did some uh, bike trail improvements, um, things like that. And then we laid uh, eight foot by seven foot box culvert out of the park into Kearney Street and uh, made it to Mississippi and turned the corner, started going east on Mississippi for maybe 100 feet or so. So that was the end of phase one. Phase two, we are continuing to lay that eight foot by seven foot box culvert east along Mississippi. And for phase two, we will get just past Monaco, uh, just past that bus stop just east of Monaco. And then as part of this, we have to lower a major Denver water conduit, a 72 inch water line to get it out of our way. So we're gonna be occupying some real estate in Monaco for uh, about three months. And um, so that's the end of phase two. And then when we get into phase three, um, we will continue laying the pipe down Oneida and then turn north to Tennessee. So. Um, that's basically the three phases of the Tennessee and Oneida storm system. Um, 
And actually the background of this slide is a, a news article in the Denver Post, some flooding that was happening in the Tennessee and Oneida Basin. Um, so basically, ultimately what we're trying to do here is decrease property damage uh, due to storms um, and increase pedestrian and driver safety during the events. Um, and then also we'll be repaving uh, Mississippi and upgrading some of the ADA ramps on the corners to make everything all ADA compliant. So those are the main benefits you'll see from this phase of Tennessee and Oneida. And now I just wanna kind of go over what was done in phase one. Um, first, we started here. This is where we have an outfall into the Cherry Creek um, basically where Lollipop Lake will daylight into the Cherry Creek and we put a bunch of site boulders and did some cool features there. Um, basically buried some riprap to armor the slope to, to help improve uh, fight against erosion. Uh, so that was kind of the Cherry Creek side of phase one. And then the Lollipop Lake Garland Park side, um, like you'll see there, we increased the footprint of uh, Lollipop Lake. We created like a little seating, like an overlook area. We converted a lot of uh, bluegrass sod into drought resistant uh, native grasses, uh, upgraded the irrigation system in the park, um, really improved the trail system through the park. Um, and that was basically the end of phase one. We finished, I'd say, in October. Um, the contractor from phase one, they're still, uh, you're going to see a little bit of presence from them as the, you know, spring comes and we're going to see how much of their landscaping took hold or whatever. There's a little punch list stuff left on that, but basically phase one finished last fall. And then phase two is starting here in a couple of weeks. Uh, the project is going to include, we're building like 1,400 lineal feet of box culvert infrastructure. Um, we are also replacing 870 feet of old sanitary line. That's your uh, you know, storm or sanitary sewer line. We are adding some inlet laterals, some smaller reinforced concrete pipe. Um, adding 12 inlets along Mississippi to, to help with any local flooding, um, and then putting in 18 separate manholes. Also, we are lowering this Denver water, the 72 inch conduit and, um, replacing about 115 feet of that conduit. So that's pretty much our boundaries and the scope. I'll hand it off now to Travis to kind of get into the timeline. Thank you, Brian. So overall, the project is going to start the uh, first week of May, May 6th, and we'll break ground. It'll continue until late spring, early summer of 2025. The first phase of the project is relocating a sanitary sewer line down Mississippi. So that'll start May 6th. That will run until the second or third week of June. Once that's done, the second phase of the job is going to be starting to install the 8x7 box. We'll start that from Kearney and work our way east. That work will start probably the third or fourth week of June. We'll continue working east. We should make it to Monaco by September. So then phase three will be installing the box in southbound Monaco. That work will happen in September. And then phase four will be installing the box in the northbound lands of Monaco and then working east from that. So kind of an overview breakdown here so that Dash line you see there, that's basically the location, the new 8 by 7 box that's going to handle the drainage. I said the first phase, which will be from May 6th to mid-June, that's what you see in the blue there. That'll be going from late into Monaco Street. When we have this closed down, we'll, that road will be closed down. There will be access to the driveways on the north side of Mississippi. And then I'm calling the phase 1B is we will have to shut down one lane of southbound Monaco because we do extend into Monaco a little bit. So then phase two, this is the installation of the eight by seven box. This will go from Kearney Street to Monaco Street. This will start in mid-June and run through October. The majority of Mississippi will be closed. However, we will keep one lane open for access to the driveways on the north side. Then phase three is the work in southbound Monaco Parkway. And phase four is the work in northbound Monaco Parkway and then continuing east on Mississippi Avenue. 
kind of to explain a little bit more about Monaco here. So come September, from September to October, there'll be a full closure on Mississippi Avenue to the west. We will completely shut down southbound Monaco, and we will shift all the traffic in a single lane, head-to-head -head, head -head configuration on northbound Monaco Parkway. And then once we're ready to switch, then we'll reopen southbound and we put all the traffic in a head-to-head head -head configuration on southbound Monaco Parkway and northbound Monaco will be closed as well as Mississippi to the east. This will be like this from for a couple of months as we have the 72-inch waterline lowering as well as the box insulation. Once we finish that by December, January, we'll resume moving our way east with the box culvert. So kind of what to expect for construction. Uh, working hours are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, if There shouldn't be any Saturdays or night work, but if there is, it'll just be very rare occasions. There will be some temporary relocation of the RTD bus route 11. RTD is aware of that, and they're going to reroute that location. There will be turn restrictions and access changes. There will be on-street parking restrictions on Mississippi. There will be some work in the city right-of-way adjacent to homes, uh, but we will maintain access to all the driveways on the northbound side of Mississippi. All right. Reminder about the, the Q&A button at the bottom. If you have any questions or comments, now's the time to, to drop them in there if you haven't already done so. And it doesn't look like anybody has. Uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, if you do have a question that we can't answer tonight, you know, we can certainly follow up with you after this meeting and, and get you uh, uh, what you need. Uh, here's some other ways to stay updated uh, beyond the meeting tonight. Uh, we do have a project hotline. Uh, feel free to leave a message there anytime. Uh, project representative will get back to you just as soon as possible. Uh, we do have the, the email account as well and the project website. Uh, if you scan that QR code, uh, that will take you directly to the website. So uh, looks like there might be a question in here. Uh, will the entrance to the French Quarter on Mississippi be open? I'll go ahead and take this one. Um, so we will be closing the entrance off of the French uh, into the French Quarter off of Mississippi, but the entrance off of Monaco will always remain open. And that's just because we do have to build through there. So there won't be enough room to go in and out, but access off of Monica will always be available. And then uh, Matt also had a question. So during phase one, two or three, um, will the hundred year floodplain boundaries at Lollipop Lake be changed? Um, I believe a Dottie representative, we were talking about this earlier. Sorry, I was muted. Um, no, it won't. So the outlet structure that we built at Lollipop Lake has like uh, several different orifice plates. So as the lake rises, more and more water will spill into the outlet and then out into the Cherry Creek. And then ultimately at the very top of the outlet structure, if water was to ever get that high, it would just spill in the top of the structure and completely dump into the Cherry Creek. So you really shouldn't see much uh, change in lake elevation levels. Um, and just so you know, every night the park uh, irrigates the park itself with lake water. So every night um, they run sprinklers out there. So you'll see the park a little lower in the morning and then it'll, it gets fed by an aquifer underground and it'll come back up by uh, the evening again. So it does fluctuate, but it is designed to do that. Hopefully Thanks, that answers the question. Does anyone have any more questions? Please feel free to type them in now. Uh, the project team will hang around for a few more minutes in case anyone has any questions they would like us to answer. Um, if you don't wanna answer it in the meeting or don't wanna ask it in the meeting, please feel free to call us or email that hotline as well as scanning the QR code that takes you directly to the project website where we will be uploading up-to-date information about traffic impacts, parking restrictions, anything like that. All your information can be found there. So we will hang around a couple more minutes if anyone has any other questions. If not, have a great rest of your Wednesday evening and thank you for joining us tonight.